G'day guys, Cam Wild from Wild Touring. Today we're filming the 12 volt canopy fit out. So I'm with Jason from Off-Road Living. Jason, thanks for having us, mate. No worries, welcome, thank you. So can you tell us um, about Off-Road Living, how it came to be and what it is that you guys do? Sure. Um, Off-Road Living was born out of a desire to build a, a better quality product after having many full drive and camping trips ruined, I guess, um, as a result of products that failed, having to pack up, go back to town, get something fixed and come away. So we decided to build a business and, uh, and a product range from there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it started online and grew to where we are now in a much bigger warehouse and a bricks and mortar store and um, doing installation works for customers as well. Cool. So we're in your shop now. Uh, this is the Wangara store in Perth. Yep. Uh, you still have all your products available online if people want to buy them anywhere in Australia? That's correct. Yep. So you can purchase through the store online, uh, contact us on Facebook by phone or email, um, come in and have a look at them or you can have a look at them on the website, yeah. And if anyone wants to buy something online, freight is free anywhere in Australia, is yep. that correct? Yep, freight, uh, we, we ship all around the country. Um, doesn't matter whether you're in the city or out in the bush, we, we can get it to you, no worries, no mm. worries at all, yeah. And that's actually how I found these guys first initially. Uh, probably three or four years ago, I was in the market for lithium batteries. I did a heap of research online trying to find what was the best product I could get. Um, and uh, I kept hearing about all spark batteries. Um, several people that I really trust in the industry were running their batteries. Um, so I made contact with Jason. This is something Jason can do for you guys as well. If you don't know exactly what you need, you can ring him up um, or any of his uh, colleagues here. You can have a chat about what your needs and your expectations are for your 12 volt system. And Jason can work through um, exactly what you need to do that and how much it's gonna cost you. Yep. Yeah, I'm firmly of the belief that there's no such thing as a one size fits all. Every, every vehicle, every person's setup is gonna be very different. They're going to use power differently, different times of the day with different devices for different durations. So everybody has a unique requirement mm -hmm. and we will help you size your battery, your solar and your charging systems uh, to suit your specific power requirements. So I think I initially bought um, four 100 amp hour all spark lithium batteries yep. from you all those yep. years ago. Yep. I put two of them in my father-in-law's uh, Jayco in the van, yep. caravan yep. and I put two in my old canopy on the back of the D-Max. That's right, yep. So between the two of us, we've done about 150,000 Ks yep. around Australia. There's a lot of driving, yep. Yeah, and yep. I've run all sorts of stupid stuff off this system. Yep. Um, and the batteries have always just worked exceptionally well, which yep. is why I'm back here today. Yep. So I was running uh, a fridge, a freezer, a microwave, a coffee machine at yep. one point, pod That's machine, right. yep. milk frother, oven, and then all the travel users. buddy. Yeah, compressor straight stuff. off yep. the batteries. That's right, yep. Yeah, yep. it's good gear. Yeah, they can do everything you need them to do. There's a lot of batteries out there, unfortunately, that are got a very low duty rating, yeah. uh, really cheap quality cells, or they've got ratings that aren't even close to what they really claim to be. Yeah. Uh, and that's what you get in the, the really cheap batteries on the market. Um, if you want something that's reliable, that's gonna perform when you're out bush and uh, not let you down when you're, you know, a thousand Ks from nowhere, mm. uh, you need a good quality system. We're about to get a customer in here, aren't we? We are, yeah. I cool. didn't think about that one when nah, we started. No, that's right. That's why one. I wanted to start early. <laughs> Let's finish it there, mate. Let's yeah. get straight into this build. No and um, I'll take the camera in there and, and follow along. Very good. Cheers, okay. Jase. Cheers. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Kim. Hello. Thanks, Hello, mate. How are you, mate?
Jason and his crew have done a fantastic job of this. Um, like Jason said from the beginning, uh, no two setups are going to be 100% alike. What I'm running here is not necessarily what's going to work for you, but this has been tailored for what I need. This system is very similar to what I ran last time. I'm sticking with what's worked for me in the past, um, just with some, some minor changes. So let me run you through what I've got. Um, I'm continuing to run the 40 amp Enerdrive DC-DC charger. Uh, that's worked really well for me in the past, so I'm sticking with that. Jason sells these. He also sells um, Red Arc and Victron gear as well. I'm going to continue to run the Cell Fire, although if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I'm not totally sold on it. However, I've had some new advice recently about different antennas and different things I can do with it to improve it, so I'm going to give that a go. If you don't know what a Cell Fire is, it is basically a mobile phone um, signal booster, so you can get signal out in the bush. I've got Allspark's branded um, resettable circuit breakers here. The big 200 amp one at the top there is for the inverter. I am running a 2500 watt uh, inverter. Allspark brand, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, next resettable circuit break down here is a 100 amp hour one. This is for this big um, Anderson plug here with the big cables coming off it. They've made this big enough so that I can run a second air compressor off it if I ever had to, um, for sort of high current stuff. Uh, mainly for me, it's gonna to be to run the winch on the roof to uh, winch the boat on top. So that's really handy. And then down here, the 60 amp circuit breaker is to isolate the DC-DC charger. Uh, this is Allspark's own brand fuse panel. This is a really cool one because when your fuse blows, so I'm gonna simulate that by pulling this out, opening the circuit, a little light comes on there so you know exactly which fuse is blown. I thought that was pretty neat and you can see that through the cover um, without having to remove it. So I like that. That's uh, Allspark's own brand, Jason's developed that. A couple of switches here, one's for the cell fire, one's for the water pump, um, and this is a spare one here. I've got a couple of spare um, cigarette and USB sockets there. There's heaps on the other side, I'll show you them in a sec. So these guys have done a fantastic job of this and it looks really good. Uh, but looking good was not necessarily the bill. The reason that I've got all this stuff on show is not because it looks cool, it's because I need access to it. Uh, in case I need to change settings on the DC-DC charger, I need to reset circuit breakers, change fuses uh, and whatnot. So that's the panel. Hidden away here underneath this drawer, I've got a 150 amp hour Allspark lithium battery. Um, previously, I used to run 200 amp hours of Allspark batteries for the last few years. Um, obviously, I'm sticking with Allspark Lithium because it's worked really well for me. Um, it's priced in the sweet spot and the specs are the best on the market, uh, best on the Australian market. Um, I did actually have a chat to Jason about that in a little bit more depth about what sets his batteries apart from other ones on the market. Because obviously, if you've been looking at Lithium, you'd see that the prices vary enormously. If you don't know why, um, it's worth watching this video. It, it does get sort of pretty technical and in-depth um, about lithium, so it's not going to interest everyone. That's why I thought I'd do it in a separate video. So anyway, the battery's underneath there, hidden away. Uh, it is accessible if I need to get to it, but I shouldn't need to really for any reason. Uh, running off the battery, I've got the big uh, ARB dual piston compressor there. Um, that bracket was built by Thunderfab. They've done a really nice job of it. Uh, all spark of wired the switch up there and ran I mean if you've seen the harness that comes off these things it's huge and it's ugly so they've done a really good job of making that neat and tidy the boys have also wired in my water pump and there's a water pump gauge there on my switch panel which is really nice and neat also running off this battery is a Bushman 85 liter upright fridge this is my first upright fridge um, I've only used it for one trip so far, but it went really well, and I'm thinking it's gonna be a good thing. It's a hell of a lot lighter than our traditional chest fridges, and for the volume, it's got a fairly small footprint. So I think it's gonna be good. Uh, it's also got a little freezer, which was really handy for bait and icy poles and a couple of steaks or whatever. Now on top of that fridge is my Allspark 2500 watt inverter. This fit perfectly in that spot. I was really lucky. Now that's a really big inverter, 2500 watt. Uh, the battery that I'm running has a max continuous discharge current of 175 amp, which is closer to just over 2000 watt. So I can't run that inverter at full whack at 2500 watt with just the one uh, battery of this size, which is why I've limited the circuit to 200 amp with the 200 amp circuit breaker. Now I don't need to anyway, because the highest current um, item I've got, the highest drawer is gonna be my induction cooker, which I'll show you now. And that draws at full whack about 1800 watt. So first time running an induction cooker. Again, not 100% sold on it yet. It's a little bit of a, a learning curve, learning to cook with it. It's a little bit different, um, but there are a lot of benefits. I don't have to worry about um, 
you know, refilling gas bottles. Uh, it's a hell of a lot lighter than lugging around a cooker and gas bottles. And it's not affected by the wind, which is a real issue uh, on the West Coast. Also running off this battery, obviously, is uh, lighting all around. I'm using some PDP strip lights, which are really nice. They've got the amber and the white light on them. And I'm also running my Travel Buddy again, which I love. Could put in a heap of USB and um, cigarette plug sockets for me because I needed a heap of them to charge all my camera gear, microphones, drones, phones, all the rest of it. So believe it or not, I will actually use all of those. That'll be really handy. To monitor my battery capacity, I'm going to continue to run the Victron BMV712 Bluetooth battery monitor. I really like this unit. It'll tell me, it uses a shunt to tell you exactly how much capacity has come out, exactly how much is going in through the alternator or through solar or whatever. Um, and it will reflect that as a percentage if you like. Uh, it's really clever. It'll give you a breakdown of how many hours you've got left if you continue to run, um, you know, at the load you are. Yeah, so ran that for the last few years and it was really good. So I'm going to continue to run it. Plus it fit really well on my switch panel up there. So that was a no brainer. So in terms of charging this setup, like I said, I've got the 40 amp DC DC charger. So that'll, while the car's running, that'll charge this battery bank. Uh, I don't have fixed solar on the roof of this like I did with the last build. Reason being that I want to have the tinny on top. So solar, fixed solar on top would be kind of pointless. So I am using an AllSpark 200 watt uh, folding solar blanket, which I've just used on the last trip and that went really well. So the last trip I was away for five days, it was an incredibly uh, remote and rugged destination. It was Dirk Hartog Island off the uh, west coast. That was five days with uh, no shore power, no AC. I actually have no way to charge this off AC. I'm not gonna need to. Um, I could have put an AC charger in it, but for the type of touring I'm doing, there's just no point. So it's purely charging off the alternator when I'm driving and my solar blanket. So for five days, I was cooking only off uh, electric sources, off the travel buddy or off the induction cooker, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and it worked perfectly. So that pretty much wraps it up. Jason and his team from Off-Road Living have had done an absolutely fantastic job of this. They were kind enough to allow me into the workshop to film it, which was really cool. They've also been kind enough to pass on a 10% discount to you guys. So if you use my discount code WILD, when you purchase anything AllSpark brand, like uh, lithium batteries, solar panels, resettable circuit breakers, fuse panels, um, etc. Anything all spark brand, you get 10% off. If you live around Perth or if you're traveling through and you want your own 12 volt fit out done like this, do speak to Jason and his team from Off-Road Living. Their work is amazing. If you don't live local and you want to get a hold of some gear, uh, like I said at the start of the video, freight is free Australia wide. Prices are really competitive. Um, they're a family run business, you can't go wrong. And I think that's about it. Oh, I'm going to be at the Perth Four Wheel Drive Show with these guys this year. So November 5, 6, 7, I'm going to be at the Off-Road Living stall. I'm going to have the car on display. Uh, the canopy opened up so you can have a look for yourself. If you're around and you see me, please come say good day and have a look if you're interested. I'll probably have some, some merch for sale there if you want to get a hold of any of that. Cheers, guys. Keep an eye out for the video of all this being used on Dirk Hartog Island. It was a ripper trip and uh, I think you'll enjoy that video as well. Uh, also keep an eye out for the video dropping in the next couple of days, going a little bit further in depth with uh, lithium batteries and some, some differences between what's available on the market. Thanks guys, see you in the next one. Cheers. Hi, I'm back, welcome. Is it recording now? Oh, it is recording. <laughs>